everyone. Welcome back to a new year. Hope you guys had a restful week, few weeks off, and now we're getting going. So hopefully you picked up these notes from school or you have some paper ready to go. This is the tentative plan. It does start with a B day. So B, A, B, A, B. So by Wednesday, you should have had days one and two notes done. So then you're ready to go and have virtual class and we can start our warm ups. So day one, simplify and multiply rational expressions. We are going to be factoring this entire unit. So please make sure that you know how to factor and you are comfortable with it. Please ask questions if you need to. A rational expression is an expression with fractions. Very fancy. Expression with fractions. So get used to them. We are combining them in various ways, adding, subtracting, multiplying, and dividing. When you multiply rational expressions, you are multiplying across. So you have a numerator and denominator, numerator and denominator, and you will be multiplying across. If you have a numerator and a denominator and another number, pretend you are going to put a one under that and then multiply that way, all right? So the, for the first one, we need to think about factors. So if I had 6 over 18 and I wanted to reduce that, I need to think of the factors that go in it. I'm not going to say one, 6 is 1 plus 5. Okay, no, I'm thinking of what factors go into 6. So factors that go into 6 are 2 and 3. And then what goes into 18? Well, we could say 2, 3, and another three, and then we could take away the factors that are the same, and this could become one third. All right, so for number one, again, what we want to take out the factors and reduce from there. So first we're gonna simplify. So, so we're gonna take out a three, and we should have x plus four remaining on the inside over three. Okay, now let's look to see what factors we have in common. We have a three in common, so those are gonna be divided out, and what do I have left over? x plus four, okay? All right, for number two, okay, so for number two, we want to see what is very similar, and I'm going to kind of break it apart to see the different factors. So I'm going to have 18 over 9, and then I'm going to have x to the fourth over x. Again, what we're expecting with your notes is you're filling them out. If you just have answers, we don't know what you completed on your own. So it's really important that you are showing your work so we can give you credit for it. So z over z becomes one, and y2 over y3, well, what is that? Well, there's one y remaining on the bottom, okay? x to the fourth over x, well, if I take away the x on the bottom, there's three remaining on the top. And then for the last one, 18 divided by nine, so what factor they have in common a nine, and then they'll have a two left over on the top. So let's put this all together. I would have 2x to the third over y as my answer. All right, moving right along to number three. So number three, we need to look at what can we, what is the greatest common factor? So on the top, they have a 4y in common and then a y plus 2 remaining. And then on the bottom, that's the difference of two squares. So I have y plus 2 and y minus 2. Now that everything is factored, Okay, now we can take away the factors that are the same. So y plus 2 and y plus 2 on the numerator and denominator gets taken away. And then what do I have remaining? 4y over y minus 2. Fantastic. All right, the same thing for number 4. I want you to take out the greatest common factor on the top. And then what's remaining on the inside? x plus 5. Okay. On the bottom, we're going to do the x method because I see a trinomial. 30 on the top, 11 on the bottom. What multiplies to 30 and adds to 11? 5 and 6. Okay, so 5 and 6. So x plus 5 and x plus 6. All right, what, what factor is in common? The x plus 5. So remaining, I have negative 4 over x plus 6. So we're going to keep doing this. Put the numerator together. I'd have 6 times x plus 4. And then on the bottom, I would have 3x and then x minus 5 times, oop, x minus 5, sorry about that, x plus 4. There we go. So now let's see what factors we can take away. So x plus 4 
is similar, and then six and three. So if they have a three in common, so what would be left on the on the numerator? Two, and then on the bottom, they would have x times x minus five, and then that is our final answer. Let's say that you had a multiple choice option, and this wasn't one of your options. So it could be two times, then when you multiply it out, x squared minus five x. So that might also be an option. Ask your teachers in class which one they prefer. I would be fine with it staying in factored form, okay, instead of expanding it. All right, the next one. So we want to first make factors for all of them and then put them all together. So 2x minus 10, we can take out the greatest common factor is 2, and then I have x minus 5 remaining. And then the 9x squared, can't do anything with that yet x squared plus 3x minus 10, that's a trinomial, so let's see if we can solve it by doing the x method. So we have 5 and 2, which multiplies to 10 and adds to 3. How does it add to 3 if this is a negative 2? So the denominator is now going to change to x plus 5 and x minus 2. All right, now let's talk about this factor. So how can we factor up this section and then we can put everything together? So I have 6x squared minus 12x. So I can take a 6 out, 6x out, and I have x minus 2 remaining. So I'm going to combine that with the rest of the denominator. So I have 6x times x plus 5, x minus 2, and then I have another x minus 2. So that's the denominator connect combined. And now on the top, I have 9x squared and 2. So I can do, so 2 times 9, I can make 18x squared and then x minus 5. All right, so now that things are multiplied together, and so first factor, combine everything, and now let's see if we can reduce. So x minus 5. So I can only reduce the front. So 18 and 6, what factor? They have a 6 in common, so then if I take out a 6, I have a 3 left. And then the x squared and the x, I can take away an x on the bottom and have one remaining. So then I have 3x times x minus 5 over x plus 5 times, and I have two of these, so then that can become x minus 2 squared. And this is what I would have as your final answer. All right, let's keep on going. All right, so I'm going to work out number 7, and I want you to try number 8, because it's really important that we're trying these out and going from and seeing how, how we're doing. All right, so 5k squared minus 10k, I can take out a 5k, and then I have k minus 2, and then I can take out a 6 for the second one, and I have k squared minus, minus 1 on the top. Okay, and what about this k squared minus 1? That's a difference of squares, so I can even factor that out even more. So then what do I have? k plus 1 and k minus 1. There we go, and then I combined it all on the top. Now let's talk about this bottom one. Again, I have 2. I can take a 2 out, and then I have k squared minus 1, and look at that. It looks very similar to what happened on the top. So I have 2, k plus 1, and k minus 1. So be very careful. Be ca very careful when you are doing the difference of squares. Look for those. Look for the trinomials. Look for the greatest common factors. Reduce these the best you can. So if I take a 15 out of this one, then I have k minus 2 left over on there. So then I have 15 and k minus 2. All right, so now let's see what I can take away and reduce. So k minus 2, I can take those out. The k plus 1s I can take out. The k minus 1s I can take out. And what do I have remaining? Well, I have 5k times 6 is 30k. And then on the bottom, I have 2 times 15, which is 30. So after all of that, reducing, taking the 30s out, those are the same factor. All of that, and I have only k remaining. So I want you to try number 8. First, you want to factor. So if I take a 3 out and I have y squared minus 4, what is that when you factor that out? If I take a 4 out of the second one, I have y squared minus 100. Now, when I do that, what are my factors? So thinking about that, and then again, this is a trinomial, so follow, so figure out what those factors are. Pause the video and come back and see what you get as your final answer.
So as your final answer, you got y plus 2 times y minus 10 over y plus 10. Once you factored it all out, simplified, and this is your final answer. So you wouldn't, to me, you wouldn't have to FOIL it. You could leave it as that, as your most simplified answer. All right, number, number nine. When you don't have two fractions, remember, if you have a, if you just have a, fa, you know, a trinomial or something on the top, that means that you need to have a denominator of one. Then you can multiply across. So I have x minus four over x to the third plus one. Well, that is a sum of cubes. So you need to remind yourself about finding the sum of cubes. So what does that mean? x squared plus one. So you have x plus one because it's a plus, and that means if this is a plus, remember these are the same, and then this one right here is the opposite. Then you have x squared minus x, and then you have plus one. So again, the first one is plus, and then the second one is minus. All right? So that's what you have for the difference of uh, the, the sum of cubes. And then I'm going to put x squared minus x plus 1 on the top. And then you multiplied them together. And let's see what we have for our factors. So usually I would take this trinomial and see what goes into 1 and then what, what adds up to negative 1. But I notice already that these trinomials are the same. So those trinomials, trinomials are the same, so therefore those can be taken away. All right, that, that, can, that can be reduced. So therefore my final answer is x minus four over x plus one. And there you go. All right, last one for this, for this section, doing great guys, is this one. Again, the second, our second fraction, in order to make it a fraction, you need to have a one um, on the bottom. And let's go through this one and make sure that we can factor it. All right, so let's look at this first trinomial because it seems a bit complicated, this one right here. So I'm going to first take out the greatest common factor, which is negative 2x squared, and see what I have remaining. x squared minus 6x plus 9. There we go. So that's what I have once I take out the negative 2x squared. And then I also have this x squared plus 3x plus 9. So for now, I'm going to just put that on the top. So x squared plus 3x plus 9. I'll just place it on the top for now and see if I need to factor it later. Okay, let's see if there's anything that we have for now. So x cubed minus 27, that's the difference of cubes. So what does that mean? I need to make... The, the first one is going to be the same. So I have x. Well, what's the cube root of 27? 3. So that means I have, so I, I found the cube root of both. And then if this is the same, this one is the opposite. So if this is negative, that means this is positive. Then I have x squared plus 3x plus 9. There we go. Okay. By, by following the difference of cubes. All right. So that identity. So I'm going to look to see, is there anything that I see that is in common? And then if I have to factor more, I can. All right. Sorry about all the dings. If you hear them, my computer is getting lots of notifications. So x squared plus 3x plus 9. And then I have x squared plus 3x plus 9. Ta-da. So those can be reduced. From here, let's see if I can make this trinomial smaller and make more factors. Okay. So there's not more than one way to do this. What I like to do is if I see more than one trinomial, I'm going to see if I can take those out right now and then go from there. So, and then I have nine and negative six. So that means I have a negative three and a negative three. They're both negative to make a positive nine. They're both negative to add to negative six. So again, I have negative two X squared on the outside. My factors are X minus three times X minus three. My remaining denominator is x minus 3 once I took away this trinomial, okay? And that means I could take away another factor of x minus 3. So final answer, negative 2x squared times x minus 3. There we go. So when simplifying, make sure you are factoring the best you can and then take away the same factors that are in the numerator and denominator and simplify the best you can. Take your time with your homework and ask questions. Have a great day.